All right. So I want to quickly go over this um, portion of uh, Chuck Mistler. And I want to expose his teachings as <laughs> it's very false. Very, very false. And let's try to make this easy to see. You're also post-tribulation. I'll take care of that next time. Um, and uh, now, what are the problems with this view? It's the most widely held view. All right, so most widely held viewed. I, I don't hardly know anybody that even preaches it, teaches it. Uh, and I myself, I don't subscribe to it. I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter what this uh, amillennialism is, premillennialism is, I can't even hardly say millennialism. I just believe what the Bible says. Okay, so forget about this straw man argument, this idea that it's the most popular view. And I'm not seeing it. I'm looking at this stuff every day. The most popular view is this idea that Chuck is preaching. But what? But whatever. You among uh, would-be Christians. Well, first of all, it does violence to the messianic promises all through. Okay, so when he says messianic promises, he's referring to 1948 Israel and those Jews that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. The Old Testament. There are passages and passages and passages that are unconditional in favor of Israel that you have to do something with. So again, when he mentions Israel, he's not talking about the Israel of the Old Testament. He's not talking about the Israel of today, the true Israel, which is the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about 1948 Israel and a group of people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the, tra the tragedy of Amal See, many of these views, we have many views in, in, in prophecy that good men can co comfortably disagree. This one is dangerous because it makes, it attacks the character of God. Did God mean what he said and, and, and say what he mean, meant in the Old Testament? There are hundreds of these prophecies. The destiny of. So the, the head tilted down and turned sideways, he's posing himself as the authority. And once again, this guy is a false teacher and a liar. What do you mean? Meant in the Old Testament. There are hundreds of these prophecies. The destiny of Israel and God's covenants is the issue. The church has been classically anti Semitic. That uh, anti Semitic? You know, the, 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 the Jews killed Christ. It's all that nonsense. The Jews killed Christ and all that nonsense. All right, so First Thessalonians two. I mean, come on, First Thessalonians two, verse fourteen. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which is in Judea, are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have. They have. I'm sorry, even as they have of the Jews. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Clearly, clearly the Jews killed the Lord Jesus. Now, if you understand the scripture, you know that Jesus laid down his life, that he, you know, he could have prevented it, but he gave his life for us, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, it's true that the Romans actually physically killed him. But it was the Jews that had him killed. But in all of it, in all of it, Jesus let it happen. Because he laid down his life for us. Of abuse emerged from this. There are numerous reconfirmations of these prophecies in the New Testament. Let's just take, give you one example that's easy to remember. The promise that Mary got from the angel when the angel announced 
that she was going to have a child. Gabriel says to Mary, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. How many have heard this before? Yeah, okay, good. Who are you talking to, man? A bunch of people that never read the Bible? He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him, what? The throne of his father David. That's not the Father's throne in heaven. This is the throne of his father David. It's a political throne on the planet Earth. It did not exist during his... Wow. I mean, he is feeding on people that are ignorant of the Scripture. Uh, all we have to do is do a throne David. A word search for throne David. And to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. Alright, and I mean, you heard what he said, right? He said, it does not exist. It does not exist. And the Lord God shall give unto him, what? The throne of his father David. That's not the Father's throne in heaven. This is the throne of his father David. It's a political throne on the planet Earth. It did not exist during... It did not exist. Listen to the exuberance in his voice. Right? Wow. It has the Lord has been with my Lord, the King, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. It didn't. What's it talking about if it didn't exist? And then sat Solomon upon the throne of David. It did not exist. How can Solomon sit on the throne of David if it does not exist? I mean, he's feeding off of people that do not read the Bible. I mean, you got that right before he even showed this scripture. He's like, how many have seen this? <laughs> He's hoping nobody's seen it. He's hoping nobody reads the Bible. During his lifetime. The ruler in Israel was an Edomite appointed by Rome. There was no David's throne. But the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Has he ever? Hardly. Has he ever? Has Jesus ever reigned? Hardly. Has Jesus ever reigned? Hardly. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 25. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Uh, it's, you know, just rather insane to, yeah, yeah, it's insane to say that Jesus does not reign right now. It's insanity. Alright, so let's go to this verse that Chuck doesn't want you to know. All right, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great. Is Jesus great? Yeah. He's great. He was great back then. He's still great. And shall be called the son of the highest. Okay, was he called the son of the highest back then? Yes. Is he still called? Yes. Son of the highest. And has the Lord God, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Did he? Did God do that? Yes. God did that. And he reigns over the house of Jacob, which is the house of God, which is the house of the children of God, which is the sons of God which is those of us that are born of God, those of us that are saved, those that are His people forever. And He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. There's only one 
people of God. It's never been about flesh. It's always been about spirit. It's always been by the grace of God. It's never been by the law of Moses. It's never been by the flesh. And his kingdom is forever. And there is no end of his kingdom. It's just pure insanity to say this hasn't happened yet. Pure insanity. Chuck Missler is feeding off of people that don't read the Bible. Why would you tr trust a rich man, a very, very rich man? You make no mistake about it, Chuck Missler, very, he was a very rich man, businessman, very, very wealthy, a U.S. Naval Academy intelligence officer. with a lot of money. I think about that. Think about that. Why would you trust him more than God? Why would you trust Chuck Missler more than you trust the Word of God? Why? Why?